If you're going to get serious about proving things about logic, sooner or later, you're going to need to use proofs by induction. OK, so let me talk you through how they work. Hello everyone, welcome to The Attic. My name's Mark Jago. I'm a professor in philosophy in the UK. In this video, I'm going to show you what proof by induction is and how to use it to prove things about logic. Okay, so the first thing to say is we're using mathematical induction here. We're not talking about the kind of knowledge by induction or whatever that you get in philosophy when we're thinking about knowledge of the future or knowledge of unobserved events or anything like that, okay? We're talking about a proof technique from mathematics. First and foremost, proof by induction is a way of showing that all numbers have a certain property, okay? So we're thinking about some property P and we're going to try to show that all numbers N have that property. Now, if you've studied maths at high school or uni or whatever, you'll have come across a form of proof by induction that probably looks a bit like this. So we're going to prove this in two steps. First of all, we're going to show it holds for the number zero or sometimes number one kind of doesn't make too much difference. And second step, we're going to show that if it holds for some number K, then it also holds for the next number K plus one. So why is it that if these two things hold, then the property holds for all numbers. Well, that's pretty easy to see if we think about the numbers arranged along the number line like this, then we can go, OK, so first up, the property holds for zero. And then if it holds for one number, it holds for the next. Well, it holds for zero, so it holds for one. And if it holds for one number, it holds for the next. So if it holds for one, it holds for two. And if it holds for two, it holds for three and so on. OK, so through that process, eventually we would reach every single number, every single number we would get to at some point. So we will have shown that that property holds for all numbers. OK, so this form of induction is often called weak induction. It's kind of simple to use. It's pretty obvious why it works, but it's not very flexible. And in fact, as we try to apply it to proofs in logic, it's not going to be quite the form that we need. OK, so let's start to think about how we would use a proof by induction in logic. So typically here, we're not going to be thinking about numbers. We're going to be thinking about sentences of logic. OK, and we're going to show that all sentences A have this property that we're interested in. OK, so we're thinking about some property of sentences like being made true by a model, being satisfied by a model. And we want to show that this model satisfies, let's say, all sentences in a certain set or all sentences on a finished open branch of a proof tree or whatever. OK, so we're thinking about all sentences of a certain kind. We want to show that they have some property. How do we relate that back to proof by induction? So the key idea here, and this is a phrase you see an awful lot in these proofs, we're going to do proof by induction on the complexity of sentences. So let's break that down and see what it means. So if we're thinking about an arbitrary sentence A, maybe belonging to some set or other, what do we mean by the complexity of the sentence? Well, it's just some way of assigning it a number based on how many connectives there are in it. OK, so we can count up all the connectives in that sentence. Maybe we ignore single negations in front of primitive sentences. Maybe not. It kind of depends on the case. But we count the connectives. That gives us a way of assigning a number to each sentence. So each sentence is going to get a number. Often multiple sentences will get the same number. That's absolutely fine. This is just a way of lining up sentences with numbers. So by proving something about all numbers, we're in effect proving something about all the sentences that we're thinking about. OK, so that's the way that we're going to use mathematical induction to prove something about all of the sentences that we're interested in. However, there's a problem in there in the way that we think about this weak form of induction. We assumed that we're going to reason from some number K to K plus one. And when we're dealing with numbers lined up in a nice, neat little row, we can easily move from one number to the next. But when we're dealing with sentences and the number of connectives in them, 
we're not always going to be able to move from one number to the next. So often when we're reasoning about sentences in logic, I might consider, for instance, a conjunction A and B. And that's going to be related to its conjuncts, so A and B. Now, this is going to have a certain number of connectives in it. And these are going to have less connectives in them, right? Because here's an and and it doesn't appear here. But there's not going to be a nice, neat relationship like N and N plus 1 as we measure out their complexity, right? The number assigned to this is going to be less than this, but it's not necessarily going to be one less. Typically, it won't be. So that won't allow me to apply this simple, weak form of induction going from k to k plus 1. What I need is a more powerful form of induction, and it's going to go like this. So let's go back to the case of numbers and see how this works, this stronger form of induction, and then we'll see how it works in the case of sentences. So what we're going to try and show now is that if for all numbers k, which are less than n, k has the property we're interested in, then n has the property we're interested in. OK, so we're now not going specifically from one number to the next. We're assuming that all the numbers less than the one we're interested in have the property. And we're going to try and show that n, the one we're interested in, has that property. And typically, as a special case of this, we're still going to need to show the case where zero has the property. So this is going to be our base case. And this is going to be the induction step. Now, it's quite easy to see that this strong form of induction entails the weaker form. OK, so suppose this holds so that all numbers less than n have the property. Then in particular, the previous number has the property. So weak induction would allow us to go from n minus 1 to n. OK, so this strong form of induction implies weak induction. And we've already shown that weak induction implies that all numbers have the property. So if we can demonstrate something using strong induction, then we get the effect of weak induction. So that's good. The bonus we get with strong induction is that the numbers that we're dealing with don't have to differ just by one. It doesn't have to just be, you know, k and k plus one. We just need two numbers where one is less than the other. And that's what we're going to be thinking about typically in the case of sentences. So here's a sentence with a certain complexity. Here's a sentence that's guaranteed to have lower complexity. So what we're going to do is apply induction to the number associated with this and try and prove something about this. So that's the theory behind induction. But how do we actually do it? It's usually pretty clear how we prove the base case. We think about the atomic sentences or sometimes the atomic plus the negated atomic sentences and show that the property holds. The tricky step is proving the induction step. It's an if then. So to do it, we would assume this side and try to prove this. And this is where proofs by induction can be a bit tricky. The tricky thing is making the right assumption. So this part here, the antecedent, is our inductive hypothesis. We assume that the property we're interested in holds for all sentences of lower complexity than A, and then we show that it holds for A as well. So we will typically lay out a proof by induction like this. First up, we do our base case. Then we write down our induction hypothesis. And then we try to show that given this, we can prove the property holds for an arbitrary sentence A. And typically, we have to do that by cases, by considering whether A is a conjunction, a disjunction, an if then, an if and only if, or whatever. So like we looked at before, if we consider a conjunction, we're probably going to end up thinking about it in terms of its conjuncts. They are of lower complexity. We apply the induction hypothesis to these and then try to show that given the property holds for these, it also holds for the conjunction. And then we repeat for the disjunctions and the if thens and so on. OK, so that is a really super quick introduction to proof by induction. Weak induction, how it works in a mathematical case. Strong induction, how it allows us to do a little bit more in the case of logic. And how we take that idea from a mathematical context and put it into proofs about sentences in logic. 
Okay, thank you so much for watching this far. If you found this video useful, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up. Join us on the channel, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to get notifications, and I hope to see you guys back here soon.